I maybe like to ask the, the people who have been presenting here, like how um, <coughs> how do we imagine the, the next maybe I don't know like two or three years. I mean this kind of time scale and like because there's tons of these softwares, like if you go to at, at least in uh, this audio this visualizers, this website, there's this huge resource of all kind of like DIY features of uh, projects. And and I think the motivation for all of them has been that, okay, the Resolum or one of the other popular ones doesn't do the trick. So you've done your own solution. And then yeah, how, how we would imagine like in the next three or four years, do you think we will see like a branch of like certain type of expressions emerging that okay this is software, this type of expression? And then maybe for yourself, like how much like if there would be these different solutions becoming more available that you think you feel continuing to your own thing because it's kind of the way you work and it's part of the process. Do you have any thoughts? Uh, we're really interested in um, incorporating sounds in our tools. So the, the applications, we, the two applications that we, we demoed here, are visual applications. So the correlation to sound is interpretative. So someone listens to the sound and reacts to it in a jam kind of way. But what we would want to do next is to incorporate visual, integrate visual elements with sound, so that you can build music visually um, with our own take on it, which is like this um, transparency concept that you you are showcasing what is being done. So you actually do an audiovisual collage by manipulating visual elements. As you manipulate those visual elements, you manipulate sound. So this is the principle for the things that we are thinking about now and that we are developing now. So you will be very much building an audiovisual performance. That's where we want to go. Or one of the main parts. Uh, I've been dreaming of this, but I want to reach a like what else there are musical instruments. Instruments, so that there would be a, would be a video instrument that you can play, like like guitar. Or exactly. yeah. So uh, I, I walk I play quite a few instruments, and uh, I know it's a totally different feeling when, you, when you're totally in it, and you have to see your fingers, and uh, I'd like to see some. It would be great to invent some hardware that allow allow one to have this sort of a music instrument like interface that uh, all, all I want to just have this constant flow of control control the video stream and, and the graphics just as as, uh, as we want to control the music. I think that I think there are two sides to it, I suppose. I, I think this expression side that you mentioned mm -hmm. and also in, in, in our perspective also the audience side that, so that okay you, you build things audiovisually and people I hope get a better grasp of what's being done. So I think also when you play a real instrument, as I said before, the audience gets a real grasp of what is being made right there and then. So not only for expression, but maybe also the audience will feel more what is being done. Yeah, they can see what, what's, what's going, what's going on. on. Yeah. Well, there has been those projects like the React Table, I guess, you know, it doesn't look like it looks kind of flashy, but it can be able to put the stuff. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, it's because you can see so clear, clear, clear when you're watching by what, what people yeah. are doing. You can see, ah, oh, they could think of something, they'd say something there. Yeah. <laughs> I think the audience really likes projects like that. Yeah. And then maybe another question, but like this, I mean, there is like all these things that we saw here today, there is a, a lot of work has been put into them. And currently I think all of these are used by you only. And uh, I don't know, like could you maybe reflect on the, 
kind of, I mean, I think this was asked often, like, are you planning to release it? And da da da. Um, I mean, do, do you see that this is, um, like, as a future scenario, that, that there would be, like, more people doing the same thing as you? You develop your own instrument, and then you perform with your own instrument. You kind of own your own tool. Or whether there should be more and more of these becoming. Because I mean, one issue is definitely like uh, that, like if you release this as open source, I mean, often the limitation is that since it's only developed by one person and then that only that person knows really how it works, it doesn't translate to another person. So, kind of the, the, kind of the question of releasing these is that a relevant question? I mean, or do you have any thoughts about, about that? I think in, in our case, um, to release this kind of thing, you should uh, make it possible for people to customize it in, in terms of visuals and futurally in terms of audio. So, but that, it takes an extra effort to program customizability, mm -hmm. I guess. So if we do find the time and, and the opportunity to, to do that, of course, that would be interesting. But it, it, it's an extra step. And I mean, you always have to balance between taking that extra step or then do it, developing some of your own things. Yeah, we could release the, some messy source code that well, nobody would use. Because <laughs> I don't think the tool is, a, is, an, is a, the end itself. The tool mm -hmm. is just a way to get to a certain result. So, I don't know, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of, it has to do with your temperament. This tool suits you, another tool will suit someone else. But if you want to, to be rich, <laughs> I don't think it would be that way <coughs> to, to make programs. There are better people doing that. Which is, I mean, as a background, like, like me and also Pete has been involved in, like here in, in, in Hessen, we've been uh, giving these workshops where we've been working with theater people and using video as part of theater play. And the essential thing has been the fact that we can use these tools like to quickly prototype, okay, now there's an extra character in the play, so I mean, so, so I mean, and yeah, so I mean, at least like from from my own perspective, and that's, that's something that I'm kind of trying to follow in terms of like dance, theater, and also like, yeah, even TV, like if this kind of language could spread there, it would be, yeah. Yeah, something. I think another important issue besides context is <coughs> channels, the, 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 the way I, I, we see it. For instance, we, we built our tools and we use it for performances, but then we, kind of, we are trying to re-channel that material. And uh, so we, we put out a DVD, which is kind of a screen capture of a VJ session. So that's a different channel, it's a DVD. Um, you can use it, uh, so we, now we're, we plan to develop this as also an internet experience so that you can go to this website and you can jam along to the music with this software, with this tool. Um, you could, you know, can, you could re-channel it for mobile phones if you got, uh, <laughs> uh, you, it, it could be very easily done. So I think it's related to the question you, 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 you posed. So. I, I see that happening. So, for instance, we met this guy who, who was running a, who was beginning a new small TV channel, music channel, and he's interested in hiring VJs so that they would jam along music and then it would be a new kind of TV channel. Um, so, I, I see it also, there's a lot of opportunities in this re channeling of VJ content. You think of internet, mobile phones, television, uh, you know, DVDs, 